Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Welcome back to 8-Bit Retro Refit. Um, on the desk this week we've got another drive from Tony. Uh, this time it's a 1570. The 1570 drive were quite a unique drive. Um, back in the day when Commodore created the 1571 for the Commodore 128. Uh, they seemed to run out of internal mechanisms for it. So what they did is instead of um, ceasing production on a drives because they were losing money, they decided that they was going to create the 1570. So the 1570 drive is a little cocktail between the 1541 and the 1571, as you'll see when we get it open. Um, inside there it's got the 1541 disc mechanisms inside, um, but also contains the 1571 motherboard. And the motherboard, as you all know, you guys out there that's uh, well into the retro scenes, the 1571 was a dual he read head, so it would read the bottom side of the disc and the top side of the disc at the same time. The 1541 was only single sided disc, so this one's going to be um, on the motherboard you'll see it actually um, bypassed and jumper wires all over the motherboard to take away from the top side read head. So without further ado, let's get into this and um, let's see what's wrong with this one. Ooh. So the activity light, power light comes on, the activity light comes on and goes off. So what I am hearing, I don't know whether you can guys can hear that over the... What I'm hearing is a great grinding noise, I'll just try and lift that up for you. So I'm going to have a look at that first, I think what I'll do is I'll strip it down. I've already taken the screws out of the back. So you don't have to bore you with watching and taking screws out. So what I'm going to do first is uh, take a look and see what's making that racket. So as you can see, it's quite a bit different from the last drive that was in the previous video. Um, you can see inside here and everything about there. If I bring the drive up for you. If you look up the top there, you can even see behind the head wire that it says 1571 disc. You can see all the little jumper wires that's uh, coming off the chips. There's legs that are lifted, jumper tracks everywhere, and all this circuitry, add-on circuitry, is to bypass the top side reed head. So I think what I'm going to do first is a bit similar to what we did last time, where I stripped out and cleaned all the guide rails. Um, I'm going to do that again um, and the part where the disc clamps down because I think that's the noisy part on there. So I'm just going to strip this down now and we'll take a look at what's going on with that. So now we're inside at the moment, you can see that uh, everything's pretty much the same. The only difference on here is it's got a, an optical sensor up at the top up here, um, which senses to see whether there's a disc actually in the drive or not. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's still exactly the same as the previous video. But uh, I do feel as though that feels a little bit tight when the squeaky noise is coming from this section here. So I'm just going to pull that out and hopefully we'll give that a good clean. I may have to lift the whole drive out of the unit to get to them, but uh, we'll cross that bridge. Mm 
So I'm back again with the cotton buds. That's a broken all alcohol, your hole, your hole. Same as last time, we're just cleaning the bars off, the runner rails, best as we can. Not too dirty on there, but still wants to be done anyway. It's getting a, a little bit black on there now. If you slide the head right back again, we can get access to the front of the rails. Give them a good clean off as well, so we can get any of that nastiness off. And you can see it's getting very dirty on the end of there now. It feels a bit freer already, does that, to be honest? Yeah, good. Yeah, the little head is a bit of a clean. I won't go into too much detail on this video, there's nothing going, going around this. On serious light ones we've got it all cleaned up and serviced. And then we'll take it uh, over to the Commodore 64 and uh, let's see how it performs. The head's very nice, very nice and clean now. It's a nice and clean head. Doesn't want to be any marks or anything on there, so that looks really nice now. Um, don't think I'm going to be able to get that out without lifting the whole drive out. So I think what I'm going to do is just flip that back over there. Take the six screws out from down the sides here and lift the unit out of there and I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, we're back. Just put this little light on. Give a little bit more light in there. So what we need to do is take this front cover off now. The two little screws at the side. Until these screws have never been out. You can hear the crack when I actually undo the screw. It didn't crack as much as the other ones did, but I'm sure you heard it on the other ones. Okay. So that's the front cover. We need to just sort of poof that back. And as you can see when you're looking, this part's brown look, which is the same as the 1541. All they've done is Commodore is all they've done is paint the front. You can see the actual overspray on this lever here. You can see now lifted that lever up. This piece under the under the bottom that I need to get into. there for a minute while I pop this circlip off. Okay, so that circlip's off, Let's pop that up there with a little washer. The machine washer that I'm going to take off and pop there, out of the way, and then we should be able to lift this up and out of the way. Little support bracket. We'll push that in there out of the way. This is your actual lever for ejecting. So we'll bring that out. And underneath here, we should have the part that clamps down on the disc and helps it spin. I'm just going to try and keep these in order. 
that goes at the top there. Spring then goes on. We have a little shim washer, metal washer that goes on then. Underneath there, we've got another fibre washer. Underneath here, we should be able to get that out now. It should be fairly sprung loaded, as far as I'm aware. We'll just lift that up. You can see how tight that is on there. Did you see that? I've had to literally push that up and out of there. So the spring side of the set mechanism on this is absolutely in bits. That much muck inside there. We'll take that off. Oops. We'll just take that down. So we've all got it in order. I don't know if you can see that on camera there, but the amount of muck and dirt that's coming off that. It's all sticky. So I'm going to give that a clean with some IPA. Um, the muck coming off. That centre pin, which was stopping it from running freely. Absolutely filthy is that pin. So that should be even better now. Continue cleaning. Get shut of all the rubbish and junk everywhere. Make this all free back up again. This is the part that actually clamps down on the disc and holds the disc as it spins it round. Don't really need to clean that spring, but this will be filthy. Yeah, look at that. That's bad. Ugh. Need to get all that off there if we can. Clean all that out just so it's uh, nice and free when we put it back together. Nice and clean. Go for a little fiber washer. There's no doubt it's going to be filthy as well. Filthy. A little spring on the top. I don't really need to clean the springs, but I'm just getting the thick off rather than leaving it there to go back into the old oil. Hmm. That's that. You can see down there, you can see the bottom section of that. I don't like to flex this too much, but uh, I'm just going to run a bit cleaner around inside the, about where it sits and pushes against. It holds the heads. You probably don't want to see on camera there, but uh, I'm just trying to clean around. Get under there and give that little optical sensor a bit of a clean off. Get that cleaned down. 
I think while it's stuck up in area. In fact. <laughs> Okay, so that's them two four screws back in on the front panel. Um, what I think I'm going to do is uh, take the four screws out of the two screws out of this side, that side, and lift the drive unit out and just have a quick look at the um, drive belt. Just to be 100%, make sure that it, uh, the belt's all okay. As that's sent far out, the whole unit should lift up. I should be able to squeeze past and lift out and flip her straight over. As you can see, most drives with this flappy lid are an Alps drive. I believe that the one with the lever in is a Matsumi. So, this is the belt that helps drive the drive around. Very nice and clean in there. I'm just going to have a quick look at that belt. If we take it off, take it off and lay it on a flat surface you can actually see the points where it's been sat around the uh, little drive end for a long time see how it's bent the belt if you want to uh, if you want to get rid of this you can either change the belt and put a new one in but if you want to get rid of this if you put it in a pan of boiling water for about five minutes it will soften the rubber and the rubber will go back into shape but this is not so much as a rubber belt it's quite solid it doesn't spring it's quite a tight belt on there so as you can see it's got little whether you can see that on camera or not but it's got little perforations on that side little grip sides there isn't much on this side so all i'm going to do with this is a little bit of ipa give it a clean and we're going to pop that one back in Right, let's see a little bit of IP on this uh, the cloth, just a little bit on there. Put the belt over, hold her over, and pull. Don't forget this drive's well old, it's probably about 30 35 years old because this belt's been sat there. So I'm sure it will have accumulated dust, muck, grease, etc. over the years. As you can see. Move it down a little bit now and see if we get the same reaction again further down. Reminds me of Perifactic this bit, you can hear it. <laughs> yep, yeah. nice. So we've got a lot of muck off that belt, which is great. So easy enough to pop back on, hook it down that side, lean it over and just feed the, turn the head around until it pops itself on. You watch that snap on, not difficult, just go around a couple of times, let it self centre, then you know it's not going to pop off while we're driving. The belt feels good, so I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it all back together put it back into the base um, and then we'll give it a test and see what else we get see if there's any further issues with the, with the electronics position. Good stuff. What I do with these screws is 
rule of thumb. Learned this from back in the old mechanic in days. Don't ever tighten all the screws up singular. Make sure you've got all the screws in started before you tighten one up. If you don't, it will throw off and you won't get one of the screws in and you'll end up crossing threads or stripping a screw out or something like that. It just makes it a lot easier. Get a manoeuvre around a little bit so it can free up. That's back in there. Lift the LED light out of the way. Lift the whole unit up. It should slot straight back into place. So that's that, we've got the heads lubricated, feels nice and free now, feels a lot better than what it did, I'm hoping when we put a disc in that it doesn't scrape and make all them horrible terrible noises anymore, but uh, we'll find that out as soon as we've rebuilt. Okay, so I've got it all back to built back together. And what I have noticed is when you switch it on, it does its routines, but the drive continually spins. Reason for this is I've got a feeling that this optical sensor lenser here is a little bit weak. Um, and when I put this disc in, it reflects back off there and stops. If you notice, you can hear it. But it's still spinning. Turn it off, turn it on with the disc in, it doesn't do that. So that tells me that this little optical sensor here. How do I know it's that optical sensor? Set the disc out, we switch it off, switch it back on continuously spins. If I simply take a piece of paper and put it in between that optical sensor on the disc track, like that, and we switch it off, and we switch it on, and the disc doesn't spin. So there's something in here, or in this sensor down here, that's not reading correctly. It must be a little bit poor. When you first power it on, turn it off, put the disc in, then switch it on, that's it. That should be it. Unless it does a reset, you take the disc out, doesn't make a difference, put the disc back in, oops, put the disc back in, it still doesn't spin. The only time that's gonna read there again is on first power up. This obviously here is also for the rewrite protect. So if we take that away, again, I could get another disc, the famous Ghostbusters that we had last week because now there's a notch here the sensor's not going to see that and when I switch it on I would imagine it's going to spin there you go continuous spin no other reason for it it's just because of that patch out still spinning still spinning still spinning continuously spins you switch off and switch on, it doesn't. So, there's nothing much that I can do there apart from test out the voltages of the optical sensor, see what it's given us, um, 
but finding these optical sensors they are actually molded into all the drive rails um, into the drive housing should I say so to replace this optical center would mean replacing the whole drive mechanism um, I don't think anybody wants to go to that extreme to be fair um, but we'll have a look and just see how it performs first over on the Commodore 64 Okay, so we're over at the Commodore 64. Um, we're in at the moment. I'm going to put Tony's disc back in. Let's see if we get anything from this drive. It ain't switched on yet. I need to turn the Commodore off first. Turn the drive on. Put the Commodore on. Yep, that's good. Tap the load command. Here we are, Let's see if we can get in a little directory. Nothing. Froze up solid. Right, okay. So we're getting nothing from the drive. It doesn't list anything, although it does perform correctly. When I brought it over here, I can see that the one of the serial ports on the bob board there is loose. So we're going to take that back over to the repair bench, pull this board off. And let's have a look and see what's going on with that. So here we are over the back. I can see here that's okay. Can you see this socket? Got some connections broken underneath. So I suspect there might be a serial issue underneath this point here. So I'm just going to take it back to over to the bench, pull this board off, and let's have a look and see what's going on underneath here. Okay, we're back over at the bench. This is the reason why I wanted to bring it back over to have a look. If you can see this. I don't know if there's any loose wiring underneath there or anything, but these these two are actually connected together. So it doesn't matter which one you plug in. It doesn't even matter if I plug another drive in and plug one into here. I don't even need to have this one to turn, turn it on, even if it's sat in the middle, because it'll come straight through here. But uh, we certainly do need to have a look at that and see what's going on underneath there. Plugs off, shouldn't be too difficult to know where they go. Lift this board up, let's have a look. No, I think it's just the housing. That's just the plastic side of it, it doesn't look. Oh no, I can feel the solder points wiggling around inside there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder all these. In fact, in theory if I just solder it in, it should be good on there. Should hold it tighter. Let's uh, crack out the soldering gun. I don't know how well you can see there, but if you look at that one there, we've got a loose wire there. Looks like another one there. And that one's definitely loose as well. You can see how the solar mask broken away on that one. So they've all gone. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to resolder all these contacts around this area here. Just so we've got a good connection and nothing's breaking in there. And then we'll take it back over to the 64 and give it another try. Okay, a little bit of flux. All around these points with the flux. Yeah, it's just hot. First of all. Put 
on that in there. Just gonna hold that back in place, push it right back. Put this back in place here. That's okay. Hope you can still see everything that's going on here. I'm just gonna go around all these contacts now and just touch them up. Being quite generous with the amount of solar, because we know that these guys get a lot of abuse. We can plug in and plug in the drives all the time. So that's that. These should be just the earth mounts for that connector. We're just going to try and flow a little bit more on them. See the connections are all looking good now. I don't know whether that one's supposed to be bridged or not. I don't think so. Looks like I've got a bridge to connection there, so I'll clean that up and take that bridge away. Put a little bit too much on there, I just think we should just bridge that connection, which we're all clean now. So, I'm just going to give that a quick round round with some IPA, um, give, clean the flux off, and then we'll reinstall it back into the board. Let's see if it's made a difference to the drive. Okay. Let's hook this back in. The wires out of the way. This slides underneath there. <coughs> that doesn't wiggle anymore. Good stuff. Move it back into view for you. Okay, so we've got the board back in now. Um, two screws at the side, the couple on the heat sinks are on the left hand side there. All the cables are back in, everything's back in normal. These are now solid, like they were wiggling around all over the place before. Um, so yeah, let's take it back over to the 64. Let's uh, see if this has actually made a difference. So here we are, and uh, unfortunately the, uh, the, the the camera packed up and stopped recording while I was doing this. Um, but here we are with Tony drives back to normal again now. And um, what I came across for, I serviced it all up. Um, checked it for read speed, etc. Things like that. Um, the drive itself was still unresponsive, so I've checked through, I've changed the 6526 chip inside there. Um, also noticed that the kernel, kernel ROM wasn't good neither, so that's been replaced with a an EEPROM, which I've burnt on there, labelled up and put on there. So what we're going to do now is, just to show you a final run and final test over on this drive, that things working all okay, we're going to take it over to the Commodore 64 and just show the drive working. So okay, the drive is now reacting properly. We don't have a continuous spin anymore when we switch it on. Light comes on, light goes off, drive spinning, drive stops. Just how it should work. Just start the 64 up. 
I'm just going to pop this drive in. Don't know whether you can hear it on the camera or not. But as you put the disc in, the drive starts to spin. So put the disc in. I'm just going to quickly do a directory read. I'm going to go with the full directory read. And we'll go for loading of the game. You can see on the camera it's already loaded. Let's skip the intro part. There you go, the game is loaded up, as you can see. I've done a few extra further tests. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done, I'll just turn this off and turn it back on again. This is my demo disc, so what I've done, just to be 100% on this side of things, I made a backup of Tony's original disc, what he sent through with us. I'll just show you that. I don't know whether you'll see this on screen or not, so I'll just try and zoom into the screen a little bit. It may flicker around a bit. There you go, you've got the screen on the side there. So I've got my copied disc in there that I've backed up of this disc that Tony sent in with me. I'm going into disc utilities at the moment. We're going to have a look at disc directory. So that will just actually show you that there's his game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to format that disc. I'm going to press F5 for format. So what we're going to do, we'll call this BL3 Fury. A1 for a device number. That's now going to go through and format the disk. Okay, and you can see now in the directory we've got BL Fury. BL3, <laughs> I'll say that again. We've got BL3 Fury with zero blocks and zero data on there now. So what I'm going to do is just press that spacebar, skip out of there, take the blank disk out, put your disk back in again. Um, go to B, which is copy the whole disk. So we'll go for B. We're going to stick with drive A for source. Sorry, just drive 8 for source. Target drive is still the same, drive 8. We're going to ignore all errors because we know it's all clean, we know the disk's good. So we're going to press start, press the start. So it's asking me now when to source disk, which I've already done that. So I'm going to press enter. So we've got a full read of the disk now. So it's asking me now to insert the target disk. <laughs> so I'm going to take the source disk out, should I say, and put the target disk back in. Press return on the drive, which should now be back in that data back up onto the blank disk. We don't want to do another disk, so that's okay. We'll press no. We'll now do a F3, which is a directory read, which should show us up the game. So that's great. That game's backed up now. So let's just see if it works. So I'm going to press C and exit to fast load. I'm going to fast load the game. I don't know why it does that. It did that before. So I'm going to switch off, switch the disk drive off, switch the disk drive on, switch the 64 on, go back into fast load, load the game, and away she goes. As you can see, so it's just back that disc up nice and easy. Okay, Tony. So, again, there you go, Tony. We've got another winner. 
that's your 1570 drive back up and running and um, formatting disc perfectly fine reading disc perfectly fine all the drive mechanism has now been all serviced up so it should be nice and quiet for you um, thank you again for using retro refix